So, uh, man, these filings, man. These lawyers. I mean, it's not like it's funny, but like, this is not, you know, they don't sit there and, and say, you know, these are the facts as we believe they are. They have the most outrageous language in these uh, in these uh, filings. McMahon's team said, by publicly filing her salacious, false, and defamatory complaint, plaintiff has brazenly and intentionally violated a binding contract to arbitrate. Filing alleges McMahon and Grant engaged in a consensual relationship and references the love letter that she wrote to him in 2021, love letter in quotes, as proof of this. Contrary to plaintiff's false allegations, plaintiff and defendant engaged in a consensual relationship during which defendant never coerced plaintiff into doing anything, never mistreated her in any way. In fact, in a love letter plaintiff wrote to defendant shortly before the parties ended their relationship, plaintiff described defendant as, quote, my best friend, my love, and my everything, praising him for being the, quote, wonderful, tender, vulnerable, heart-on-your-sleeve soul you really are. It is incredulous that plaintiff, a then 42-year-old woman who claims on her resume to have a law degree from Pace University, would have written those words to defendant months after all the events in the complaint of alleged abuse, coercion, and sex trafficking, they put that in quotation marks, sex trafficking took place. Several paragraphs in the filing refute claims in Grant's lawsuit that she was in financial difficulties or was a full-time caregiver leading to her relationship with McMahon. At the time the parties met in 2019, plaintiff was not dealing with profound grief from her parents' death, McMahon's lawyer said, and struggling financially as described in her complaint, and she had not been, quote, devoting years to around-the-clock caregiving to her parents. Those statements are falsehoods. Based on a foreclosure action against plaintiff and her parents, plaintiff's father passed away on April 18, 2017, two years before plaintiff met defendant, and his marital status was recorded as widowed, confirming plaintiff's mother had passed away earlier. Filing also notes Grant was living with her fiancé, during the time of her relationship with McMahon, and that both parties were aware the other was involved in other romantic relationships. It says during the party's consensual relationship, plaintiff and defendant knew that the other was not involved, was also involved, I'm sorry, in other romantic relationships. Plaintiff was living in Park Tower, a luxury multi-million dollar building in Stamford, Connecticut, with her longtime fiancé, attorney Brian Goncalves. Goncalves? Plaintiff and Goncalves lived in the same luxury building as defendant, four floors below, when the parties began their affair in 2019. Plaintiff would often visit defendant at his condominium at all hours, including at 2.30 a.m. to pursue their affair, and return back to her condominium with Goncalves the same night. Filing noted both parties agreed to end their relationship in 2022. NDA was drawn up and signed. Agreement includes a clause that states disputes would be resolved through arbitration. In fact, because the parties wish to preserve their confidential and private nature of any disputes under the agreement, they specifically provided in the agreement that disputes would be resolved through arbitration. And so uh, there's there's plenty more here. But the gist of the story, and uh, and a lot of people had questions about, you know, what's this, that, and the other thing. So I think the gist of it is, Vince's side is claiming that there was no sex trafficking. This was a consensual relationship. They have not denied the text messages. I mean, the text messages are legitimate. I mean, they were, no one's argued that. Their claim is that, yeah, they were legitimate, but it was consensual. And obviously her side is saying, no, they were not con consensual. And I was forced into doing all of this. And the the other big thing is that uh, Janelle Grant's side claims that Vince stopped paying her, and so she went public. Vince's side is claiming, no, she violated the confidentiality agreement, and thus I stopped paying her. So, you know, a lot of this stuff here, I mean, to me, it, it shouldn't be, you know... We should be able to find out as they go if they go to discovery, which is questionable. Like, well, what what's going on here? Like, Vince's side claims that 
she was living with her fiance. And her side claims, no, 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 no. Uh, she was going through a rough time, and her ex-boyfriend allowed her to live with him for three years or whatever it was as she attempted to get back on her feet. So it is kind of like the uh, Ronda Rousey-Drew Gulak situation. Well, what's this guy say? And uh, And we don't know. But obviously, that would be one of the obvious questions. What does he say about this? Was was she his fiance at the time, or was she an ex that he allowed to live there while she was getting back on her feet? So, like a lot of these things here, you know, did she violate the confidentiality agreement before he stopped paying or not? I mean, I think we should be able to determine that, right? I mean, what happened first? So these are the. Uh, it is a. It is a. He said. She said. At this point. And uh, and each side is is claiming the other side is lying, and uh, I guess we have to wait to see where it goes from here and and what uh, John Laurinaitis' side claims, because obviously John Laurinaitis, you know, his claim is that uh, you know what she's saying is true, but I was also uh, forced into this by Vince McMahon, and uh, we have not seen his uh, side of the story yet, so that is coming. I presume within the next few weeks there was a there was a May deadline. So that's the uh, that's the gist of it. Any comments, Mike? Well, not only his side of the story, but Vince McMahon and his legal team has not gone after him yet for saying that he's a victim in all this. They are attacking now her character in the same way that she attacked his with trying to point out things about her. Her attorney did go on record as saying Vince McMahon has never known a storyline that he doesn't twist to fit his own shameful narrative. Her father was in home house hospice during his final days where Janelle continued to care for him around the clock. Prior to his death, she had been caring for her blind wheelchair bound mother using the grief of someone who has lost both of her parents is an all new level of disgusting. And then later on, and this was in a statement to Post and Russell Nomics, she said she was not dating at the time. Her ex-boyfriend allowed her to stay in the apartment as she rebuilt her life and resume post-taking care of her parents. She had no job and no other financial support to lean on, which you mentioned as well, too. One of the things that also Vince McMahon in this response is getting ahead of is this does not fall under the Speak Out Act. And that's why, and that's going to be very important here too, Brian, because this confidentiality agreement and whether or not he stopped paying her or not, is it going to cover her allegations of saying that there was sexual assault taking place? And that's going to need to be determined here, I think, on what direction this goes, as well as is there going to be any filing or anything that comes federally or statewide out of this as well, too, against McMahon, if they're looking into him that way? So that is, uh, there's more on the front page. And in fact, Dave, uh, for subscribers, wrote a uh, an even longer and more detailed story on the front page. And uh, he'll have more in the Observer this coming Friday. But uh, more after the break, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. So I uh, should mention, by the way, that uh, in, the, uh, in the McMahon filing, what, what, they're, what they're attempting to get here is uh, obviously all of this taken to arbitration. But also the final line in the arbitration clause reads that the prevailing party as determined by the arbitration tribunal, shall be entitled to recover from the non-prevailing party all of its attorneys' fees and costs. So they're trying to uh, obviously get this shut down and get all their money back. So, uh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> we shall see what happens, but... I mean, I expect it's very likely that this is, you know, not going to trial would be my guess. They're going to do everything they can to get it to settlement if this fails, then just try to negotiate a settlement so things don't go any further than they have, you know, if you're Vince McMahon's side. But again, I, you know, you got a guy who's doesn't have the best reputation going into this to begin with, including last year or 18 months ago, whatever it is, settling that case 
uh, with Rita Chatterton, where he was accused of rape after all of these years. So, again, it's a lot of he said, she said, and there's going to probably be th things that are blown up on both sides, from both sides. But, uh, yeah, I don't think he wants to go and fight this thing tooth and nail all the way to the end. But we'll see. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.